So welcome back to Art by Anna Marie. Today I'm going to be continuing on from the painting lesson last time where we painted a field of flowers or some close-up of some abstract flowers and we did that with some solid watercolour paints. I'm going to show you the contrast using some wet watercolour paints at the top and I'm also going to be mixing on my uh, side plate to show you the difference between using a palette. If you haven't seen this one which has a few little tips and tricks then I'll put a link to it up in the corner above but let's get started so we can have a look at this one. So you'll see that those layers are pretty much exactly the same. We did not do anything too spectacularly different with these kinds of um, colours. The thing I like about the um, the dry colours over the wet colours is you can get a great amount of pigment and you can travel better. I've been on aeroplanes where I've just used the um, the half pans and um, the beach or anything like that. Whereas at home these kind of um, tubes I like a lot more. Okay here we go the red. This is the bit I've been dreading. I love this red. I don't have it in a tube so we're just going to have to use this not as nice red and we're just dabbing it on and then halfway through we're going to change to a bit of orange again I don't have that same dark orange so I'm just going to make it a little bit with a bit of the extra red I'm kind of zooming through the process of this one for you because I'm assuming you watched the other one. <laughs> um, we've got some of our yellows and we're dabbing it. You will remember how the yellows um, dried last time. So you can be quite confident with those. I'm taking some of the red for the edges of our orange. and some of our orange for the edges of our red. Just to keep it all balanced. I'm going to add a bit more purple into this grass as it goes up. And that just makes it a bit shadier. red again. Mix it with this really nice red I have. Flowers at the top here. It's a bit darker. And change it over to orange. The other great thing about using this kind of ceramic dish is that you can mix all over the um, the dish whereas I find that these tend to be a little bit constrained but if you don't want your colours to touch each other those palettes are good but I like to mix everything together did I forget to turn? no I didn't um, so that's gone shiny now. We can work a bit of a heavier pigment in the front. Remember I like it to touch the petals. Um, we can't go into our reds yet because that's just going to turn into mud. So we're going to put it outside and let it dry and then come back and show you a little bit more. Thank you. 
here you see you can just activate your color again I took a little bit of time because I did actually take a sneaky break for lunch uh, so I'm just activating my green again and I'm going in with a a green that has a bit more pigment to it you can see I'm not using a lot of water at all to activate that I'm also not dry brushing dry brushing is a different technique this is still definitely wet and I'm still definitely laying that water and pigment onto the paper but it isn't a layer as such it's more um, I'm putting on I'm trying to put on extra pigment to give a little bit of definition I'm trying to um, just add a little bit of color like a lighter green so that perhaps the Sun could catch a little bit here and there um, I'm activating my red um, I thought that I had definitely rushed this one a bit you can see um, my paint um, my directional paintbrush is actually quite good for you guys to see directionally um, I've rushed it a bit and I've gone diagonally to the left you can see the one underneath it was very blobby and I kind of took my time and I had a really good time with it but really I wanted to make this video to show you that it's not necessarily if you have tubes or if you have uh, dry paint it doesn't matter really um, it's not really going to affect the outcome of the painting as much the quality of the watercolor that you choose is going to so I you know I think a basic starter kit would be a Winsor and Newton um, but then also after that it's really just about skill and having fun and again it's about your 10,000 hours of practice um, this like I said this is not me being precious at all this is me just going okay here's a field of flowers guys this is how we would do them this is how we could what we could make them look like so I'm just going to go in with a little bit of detail here and then I'm going to um, let it dry I've used the Payne's grey here um, and I'm just being really easy with it it's not a definite outline again it's just um, creating a little bit of shade and a little bit of tone if you do buy the Payne's Grey, remember with watercolour it dries lighter than it is. So maybe just a little practice like this with the um, field of flowers gives you a little bit of an idea of what that grey is actually going to look like. But if you wanted me to um, have a go at showing you how to do a proper shadow, maybe, you know, something, a tree or a person or a cat or something with a shadow and using the Payne's Grey then let me know about that as well it's a little bit more advanced um, at the moment we're just kind of applying paint and having um, a good bit of fun with it especially if you're a beginner um, little activities like this are perfect to help you um, play and experiment both of them finished I am absolutely surprised at how similar they are I genuinely I know the colors aren't exactly the same but I genuinely thought there was going to be a big difference full disclosure I have rushed this one because I literally just painted it 10 minutes ago um, but I wanted to show you what the paint would look like and if it would look any different um, so hopefully you've seen that there's not an enormous amount of difference if you're struggling with your tubes and you're thinking oh if only I had some of the dry half pans then actually you're probably more struggling with how to apply paint I prefer the tubes if I'm being super creative and I've got big washes happening and I can meld all the colors together um, I prefer these I prefer activating them but I love the half pans for if I'm traveling if I need something quick I also have some colors that I haven't yet got in the tubes because as we all know watercolors are not cheap and you don't want to make bad choices um, so but really looking at the finished product there's nothing between them you just have to keep practicing and you just have to decide what it is that you like the most and, and what kind of situation you like the most I did want to say something and I'm not sure how relevant this will be to you but I wanted to say it do not worry when you have this much paint left because you can activate it again it's not like acrylic you don't even have to put cling film over it 
just leave it somewhere away from the cats and then just add water to it. You do not have to worry when it's tube paint that you're going to waste it. It's never wasted. The other thing I wanted to mention that I didn't in the last video is these can start to look really grubby. I personally think the grubbier your palette, the more work you're doing. Um, every now and then I just clean them out a little bit with a paintbrush and some water. Do not think that is a waste. Don't be thinking at this point you need to be really precious and really sparing with your watercolours. Get in there, make them muddy sometimes, clean them sometimes, just have some fun with it. If you're always precious with your palette, you're not going to have any fun. Use it, play with it, get it dirty, get it messy and experiment. That's the most important thing. Um, I'm just going to finish off some of the details on this and show that to you. But I also wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you have found this interesting. If you need any more tips or tricks or things that you want clarified a little bit further, then please leave them in the comments below. But thank you so much. If you could spend a second to click the subscribe button, that would be awesome. But also if you could leave it a like, that's also really helpful. Then I know that you have liked this video. Thanks so much guys. Bye.